In this presentation, we'll be looking at some of the procedures involved in processing wild yeast isolates. Again, the target here is to obtain pure isolates, which can be used in brewing and beverage production, and which have no contamination from hazardous microbes, particularly bacteria and mould. We'll be looking at samples taken from fruits or flowers, which can show the potential for supporting a yeast community. Fruits, flowers, good initial sources because they contain high concentrations of sugar, which is selective for yeasts which can ferment. We'll transport our samples to the laboratory in clean containers to minimise contamination, and if possible, use gloves when handling. We can take samples from the outside or inside of the fruit, as different yeasts will grow in these different environments. And in the laboratory, we'll start with a mixed culture broth, like this one, which has grown from our inoculations earlier. A successful growth will show some turbidity and possibly surface growth, but that surface growth may well be mould and organisms require oxygen, which are less likely to be fermentative. Sediments are more likely to have anaerobic microbes and will be our best choice for processing. They'll also contain yeasts which can flocculate, and that's desirable of course when we're looking for clear beer. So here we're using a vortex mixture to suspend the sedimented yeast cells so we can take representative samples to process for purification. And here's the view in the microscope showing just a general mass of plant cell material, but here's the initial view of the microorganisms which are present there. And we can see some yeasts in the background, and that gives us a bit of reassurance that we've got a useful sample. But there will be some bacteria in there as well, so we need to do some purification. So what we're looking at here is doing a streaking method in order to take a sample of that grown broth in order to streak it out on an agar plate. And the agar we're using is malt agar. Now that's a basic extract of malt, but at a fairly low sugar concentration. So in a sense we're emphasising or encouraging a wide variety of, of yeast to grow, but we'll probably get some other organisms as well. So we want to illustrate both the procedure here. So we're taking a sample that we've uh, isolated and grown for a few days, and the longer you grow it, well, the different range of organisms will, will develop. We're using a vortex mixture here to mix it up th thoroughly. And then we're opening it next to the Bunsen burner. Just as we said before, the aseptic techniques around the Bunsen burner is going to give us control over minimising any contamination. And we're using a loop here to take a sample out. Now that's a, a, a wire, a very thin wire that we can heat up to sterilise and then to cool down before we take our sample. So just holding it um, initially and then into the sample will take a small amount. It only needs to be a drop really and we'll flame or we'll work around the flame in order to keep that tube fairly sterile and not contaminated. Now the streaking process requires us to, to do a number of streaks progressively round the agar plate. So we're doing two or three here we're flaming the loop again, and that's very important, otherwise what we'll end up is with is spreading a whole mass of organisms around the plate. So we flame the loop again, we allow it to cool, so it's not going to burn the yeast that are on the plate already, and we might cool it a little bit on the agar before we touch the sample, really picking out the end of the streak that we started with initially. So streaks in one direction, slightly turn the plate, streaks carrying on from the end of those first streaks. And we're going to do that a few times, and that will give us a good spread around the plate. And again, we're working in a clean environment that we've prepared um, previously, and really with the general controls of environment. So a good few streaks around that plate, and then we'll leave that to incubate. And here's what we're looking for, the streaks of the yeast in this case we hope. But here's what we don't want. Some of these contaminants would probably have come from um, skin cells or surfaces or contamination from hair and in the microscope we can see these as bacteria. So here's one of those colonies and here's another one showing two different types short rods and cocci as well, probably staphylococci. And here's what bacteria look like mixed in with the yeast, so quite slimy um, mucilaginous uh, colonies. And here's what yeast looks like with mould contamination. So what we've got is clear mould growth, which we don't want to uh, isolate from. And here's the pure yeast again. Those are the colonies that we want to pick off. And here they are in a bit more magnification. So we can see individual colonies and pretty well pure of the organisms. And here's what we see in the microscope. So we can check. We use, want to really use the microscope regularly in order to keep a track of what we've got. 
and those would be potential yeasts. Can't say for sure that they'll ferment. Um, here's another view of what we can get um, from another sample, uh, from another colony perhaps, and again a third one. And this is showing flocculation, so that's a good feature that we'd want in our yeast to show that it would settle at the end. And the intention at the end is to get to transfer those yeasts onto a slope like this, which we can store in the fridge and use for fermentation later.